Hey guys, this is uh, Buttery Waffles 9 or James, or whatever you want to call me. You've probably seen me in some of Master of Mudkip's videos. But uh, I decided to get my own channel, and I am going to be doing a tutorial for various things in Volts. And today's is on fission reactors. So um, I made pictures of all the main components that you need for my design and it's a reactor control rod, it's just two iron, it's pretty cheap sadly that's the least expensive part and this is the actual fission reactor itself but there are several components that you need to go with it but you make the actual reactor with a an advanced, cir an advanced control circuit, two of them two steel plates and four motors and yeah you, you basically just know how to just look at the picture it's pretty straightforward um, these are turbines and you need these to actually get power from the reactor if you don't have these it's pretty much useless and all you're gonna do is risk blowing up your house for absolutely no reason so if you're going to make anything honestly make these and then make the reactor so that you're not tempted to uh, try to do anything but in order to bring the reactor to max power you need eight of them in my design at least <clears throat> then you need uranium rods to power it obviously you have to power it on something and this is the crafting recipe for uranium rods just three uranium cakes and although not required it is highly recommended by me that before attempting this you make a hazmat suit or else you will be dying of radiation constantly and these are not these, these are pretty expensive they require 20 steel plates four basic control circuits and a full set of leather armor for the entire set so they are not exactly cheap. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being you could get it before you make a house, and 10 being you'll never get this legitly, I gave it a 5 because those steel plates are not easy to get. Anybody who's plays, who has played Volts before probably knows that steel is one of the biggest pain in the butts in the game. So anyway, I will start actually building the reactor. So you need your fission reactor obviously other minor things you need you need a water bucket redstone a lever um, let me think here oh yeah actually I forgot one of the ma major components it is a uh, thermometer which these are actually a really really dumb recipe if I remember correctly uh, okay it's on recipe mode I'll just type it in real quick. There we go. But it's basically an explosive minecart surrounded in steel, which honestly makes no sense to me whatsoever because thermometers don't explode. But that's the recipe, so we can discuss why that crafting recipe is so dumb with the creators of volts. But anyway, um, you need a thermometer. Um, go back over here sticky piston I like to bring a redstone repeater with sticky pistons because pistons are kind of annoying to hook up to redstone and let's see and then in atomic science you obviously need your turbines a reactor control rod and uh, really then all you need after that I'm I believe is the just pretty basic stuff like anything that you can put down to build structures because um, even if you just use dirt for some reason it drastically decreases the radius that the radiation that the reactor gives off oh and that's the other thing too uh, hold on I'm just gonna make it daytime here the reactor while it's on it will give off radiation so it I would not recommend it making it like in the living room of your house because it will kill you if you don't have a hazmat suit on. So the first thing you do is you just put the reactor down, pretty straightforward. And then I like to again, like you don't you don't have to build it exactly this way. This is just the way I like to do it and the way that I've done it before. But all the major like ideas you will need. So you build the reactor, put it down there, and then over here you need to put some water source blocks. They cannot be next to the reactor because they will evaporate and then 
they will disappear and your reactor will overheat. And when your, reac re your reactor overheats, bad things happen. As in gigantic nuclear explosions. Oh, man. Hold on. Okay. Anyway. So put down those. And then, once you need that, once you get that, rather, you take your turbines, which I threw away for some reason, and you put them in a square on top of the reactor, but not or around the reactor, but not on top of it. Because basically the way that the reactor, this works just like, let me get out of here. This works just like real reactors do, and um, so they're powered by heat, which evaporates water, which creates pressure that turns the turbines, and that's why the uh, Volts reactors are, in my opinion, a lot cooler than the Tekken nuclear reactors, because they actually have turbines and they're relatively complex compared to the Tekken ones. Actually, I, I take that back. Don't put down the water yet. We have to do circuiting on the underside of the reactor before we do that. So then, what I did in my version is underneath the reactor, you have to put a thermometer and you have to make it so that it is touching the reactor. Otherwise, there is no way for it to sense the heat. And what we'll do with the thermometer is you can, what, once it reads, so it has a warn right there, that's the, that's the temperature. It's at, apparently it's freezing in Minecraft world because it's zero degrees Celsius. But anyway, you can have it warn you at a certain temperature and right clicking decreases that temperature until it gets to zero and then it just goes really high back up to whatever. And once it gets to that temperature, it'll emit a redstone signal. And we need that redstone signal and it, where it acts like a pressure plate too, so obviously the current goes underneath it. And this is where I said that I like to have the repeater. But anyway, we need the redstone signal so we can power a sticky piston Put that down, get the sticky piston, okay, or not get the sticky piston. Okay, so you can power a sticky piston with a, once again, I, you know, I, I really just got to get my stuff organized here. Reactor control rod, okay. So then, as soon as the nuclear reactor or fission reactor or whatever you want to call it, as soon as there's a control rod next to it, it will shut off as in it will stop generating power, it will stop generating heat. However, if it is still hot, it will still put, water will still evaporate around it. And it will still generate electricity for a little while, but it will eventually stop. So when you turn it off, know that it is still on, and you might, I'm not positive, but you might still be able to get radiation poisoning. So be careful, but just keep that in mind. Um, okay, so then you have this, and you're pretty much good to go after this. All you need to do is make sure, oh, yeah, all you have, this is like the bare minimum in my opinion, unless that whole thing with the sticky piston and control rod is completely up to you, well, and the thermometer for that reason, that is completely up to you, however, if you don't do that, there is no way your reactor will shut itself off if it overheats, and if you over, it, and if it overheats, and you are near your house, or it is in near your house, or in your house, or whatever, your house will be gone and replaced with a large nuclear explosion crater, which, in case you didn't know, those are really ugly, and they have radioactive material everywhere. They're really annoying. So I would strongly recommend doing that, but it is not necessary. So anyway, once you do that, you just need wire. I use HV wire just because I don't want the wires blowing up, especially around something like this. It's kind of dangerous, as you can probably guess. And pump that into a bat box, or whatever you want to pump it into. It doesn't really matter. Something that takes electricity, though. And also, by the way, this, this from previous experiences, has filled up a bat box with all four megajoules in like three minutes so it is it generates power very quickly compared to solar panels and other things like that and compared to solar panels it's pretty cheap too but like I said you always have the added danger of it exploding but that really isn't 
it's not that common that it explodes if you have the thermometer system in because the only way that it will explode then, explode then is if somebody intentionally sabotages it or like a creeper goes in underneath this and blows it up which is highly unlikely so and then anyway once you're done with the wires I cover it up because I've found that it puts off less radiation when it's covered so if you just cover it up real quick, I have no idea why. And that's the other thing too, like in, in real life you can really only block radiation with lead because uh, radioactive material gives off gamma rays and stuff like that and lead's really only good at stopping it. But I don't know, I guess stone and dirt and other useless things work in Minecraft. So then you got this, got a box, I'm going to replace that because it looks ugly. Aesthetics are very important to me, I don't know why. And I'm actually... Yeah, you... Yeah, never mind. You are good to go after this. Just remember, don't do exactly what I just did there. Uh, because you do have to get to, re to your reactor in order to put uranium rods in. So I'm going to break that. I'm going to get this sign. This is actually what I did on a server that I play on. So that you don't have water flowing out into your house or base or whatever you're making this in. Okay, that sign will say just put down a sign but that water will still be there and then once I put the uranium rod in you will see it turn on and it actually slowly spins when it's on so yeah as you can see I have okay hold on I'm just gonna turn it off cheat mode so you can see I have radiation 4 carrying a uranium rod and I know for sure that carrying a uranium cake gives you radiation 3 so all of these things kill you very quickly, that's why I was considering, uh, or that's why I told you guys about considering the hazmat suit. So I believe that it's on. Yep. So as you can see now, the water around it is starting to evaporate, and this is actually refilling me with radiation. So don't stand right here unless you have a hazmat suit, because you will die. I promise. You will die very quickly too. But as you can see, the turbines spin and they generate electricity that gets pumped in here. And after turning it on for like 30 seconds, if that, we already have 500 kilojoules and filling up fast. So as you can see, this, this does generate a lot of power and it is a really efficient way to uh, make power because um, it doesn't require coal, like it's not like the coal generators or anything like that and uranium is pretty much useless unless you're making a ton of nukes because I the first time I went mining I probably had 20 uranium ore and I had nothing to do with it the first time I ever went mining in this game and okay so now this is another feature that I added on my reactor and it's really easy you just go down to the circuiting that I did for the uh, thermometer right there you can see the repeater it comes around and then all I did is I put down a lever and now when I turn when I hit the lever as you can see the fans are still going because once again I was telling you guys about how it keeps going even after it's done uh, after it's off rather but if I try to go over here yeah no that's not gonna work um, maybe, just really want to show you guys this, because the temper, the thermometer, okay, there we go. So, as you can see right now, it's at 300 degrees Celsius. So, that tells you when, and I just wrecked all the circuiting, whatever. But it's at 150 something degrees Celsius, and then once it gets to 700, it'll, or 600, or whatever I put it on, It'll emit that redstone signal and it will stop the reactor, which will in turn prevent your house from or whatever you made this in exploding. So, yeah, that's pretty much concludes the tutorial. Um, as for what you're gonna do with this crap load of power that it makes, that will be good discussions for later tutorials. Maybe particle accelerators next. I don't know, but. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. See you later, guys.